Welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle, and today we're going to talk about how to defeat the armed citizen. Not that we think that's a good thing and not that we think that is desirable. However, you need to understand if you are an armed citizen that there are forces at work and there have been for a long time attempting or working toward your disarmament and just because you believe or you don't realize it or want to think about it doesn't make it not so every day in the world as you go out about your life there are forces that are uh, seeking control of your soul there is a war going on for control of your soul and uh, denying it doesn't make it any less so but there are three essential ways that you can without firing a shot disarm the armed citizen now the United States of America uh, if you studied history and if you understand history if you didn't go to public school the last 20 years you should know that the United States of America is a grand experiment in a representative republic form of government we are not a strict democracy we are a representative republic okay but uh, we are an anomaly. The fact that the citizens of the United States of America started our history in 1776, 1789, and so forth, we began our history with the understanding that the citizen, the lawful citizen of the United States of America, could indeed have parity with the government. That is, the citizens possessed the same type of firearms and armament that the government did. And as a matter of fact, what you guys probably don't know, again, if you went to public school in the last 20 years, is during the foundational time of our government, of our nation, there was no real standing army. The army was actually very, very small, and the citizenry feared a large standing army. Why? Because up to that point in history, every time you had a large standing army, that standing army was used to suppress the citizenry. That's just the way the history of Europe and Asia, everywhere you went, if there was a large standing army, that army was there to keep you in check, to keep the taxpayer in check. And they greatly feared a large standing army or an army that possessed arms while the citizenry didn't. Well, if you have an armed citizenry, you obviously can take the army and you can send them out into the county, in the country, and you can forcibly disarm the citizens. However, what you run into is if you have a million armed citizens, what you end up with is a revolt on your hands and you don't want that. So how, without firing a shot, can you disarm an armed populace or can you convince an armed populace to disarm themselves? And that really is the trick. How do you convince the armed citizen to voluntarily disarm themselves? And we're going to do a three-part series here in the Student of the Gun homeroom. And part number one is ignorance. Now, ignorance is not being stupid or moronic. Ignorance is lacking the facts or lacking knowledge, not having the possession of all the facts. How do we keep a population ignorant? How do we dumb them down? Well, folks, I've had kids in public schools, or I did have kids in public school, for a good 12 to 15 years. And what I saw from starting in the early 1990s through the early 2000s was a consistent dumbing down and a removal of things such as history, mathematics, science, so forth, things that you can really hang your hat on. And those are replaced with what? Earth studies, Earth Day celebrations, uh, artificial self-esteem, uh, recycling day, and so forth. Uh, what you got is when you only have, number one, your kids when they go to school, they only have so many hours in the day. If they're spending their time doing an Earth Day recycling celebration, what are they not doing? When they're doing that, what are they not doing? Are they not studying American history and civics and U.S. government and so forth? My son, who is now 23 years old, we've gone over a lot of this, and he said, you know, Dad, 10 years ago, you know, eight years ago, when I was in school, junior high and high school, he said, we were never taught any of this. They never focused hard on the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and what they meant. He said, yeah, that they told us they existed, but we never 
you know, broke them down and looked at each and every one of them to see what they meant. Well, how do you keep a citizen ignorant? You take the public schooling system and you dumb it down. You replace things that used to be important with superfluous garbage like recycling day and happy purple day or whatever. The fact of the matter is, is today things are put forth as super important and more so important than history and civics and American government and so forth. So what you have is you have people that were kids 10 years ago, 15 years ago, now they become voting adults and they are completely ignorant of the history and history and founding of this nation. And how else, how do you keep adults ignorant? Well, if you control the media, if you're the mainstream media, you don't inform them of certain things. You don't inform them of things because, well, we don't want the people to be upset. For instance, I think all of we mature people know today that there was a tremendous amount of footage during 9-11, during the attacks in New York City and the World Trade Center, footage of people falling to their deaths, not just that one guy, but lots of it, and carnage. Why were you not shown that? Well, they can't handle it. The citizen can't handle it. It's better if we don't show them. Right after the Boston bomb attacks, almost immediately afterwards, amateur videos were being put up and they showed carnage. And what happened within 24 hours? They started disappearing because we don't want people to see that. We don't want them to know about that because they just can't handle it. So we'll keep them dumb. So step number one in convincing the armed populace to disarm themselves or to willfully disarm themselves is to keep them ignorant, to be ignorant. So ignorance is the first step. Now, uh, we've recommended this book previously, but since we recommended it, there have been thousands and thousands more people come to view the homeroom video. So I'm going to take the opportunity to recommend it one more time. And, and it is The Political Thought of the American Revolution by Clinton Rossiter. And this actually used to be used as a textbook in college courses. Uh, but I, I think you'd probably find it hard to discover, and maybe if you went to Hillsdale College, this book being used as a textbook. Uh, it is worth its weight in gold. And uh, you can only find them right now. I believe they're out of print. But you can still find copies on Amazon. So just look right down there below me, and you'll see the link to The Political Thought of the American Revolution. And this book is worth its weight in gold. It's worth its weight in platinum. So if you are a true American patriot, I would highly suggest picking one up. Now, for all things Student of the Gun, what are you going to do? You're going to go to studentofthegun.com.